an Irish writer by the name of Brian, uh, Brian Stoker, Brian Stoker, wrote a novel called Dracula. Then 25 years later, a movie called Nosferatu terrified silent moviegoers. And since then, there has been a steady stream of vampire movies flickering across the silver screen. All sorts of Hollywood legends have uh, took on the role of vampire. Bela Lugosi, Lon Chaney, David Niven, Peter Cushion, everyone from the original Nosferatu, Max Schreck, to Tom Cruise and Anne Rice's Interview with a Vampire, to TV's Sarah Michelle Gellar and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, to the latest adventures of Sookie Stockhouse on uh, HBO's True Blood, and the latest installment of the Twilight movies. The vampire genre strikes a chord with almost everyone. So if you're a filmmaker looking for a topic to make a movie that will bring in an audience, well, doing a vampire movie would probably be a good choice. But it's been done so many times. How do you do something fresh? Well, how about two sisters about middle school age, the older leading the younger astray, and the background for the tale, not Transylvania, but Martinsville, Virginia, well, that's exactly what local filmmakers Matt and Byron, Myron Smith did, and they're here on the show today to tell us about their uh, their movie, True Blood. Uh, I start to say True Blood, <laughs> <laughs> Young Blood, <laughs> Evil Intentions. Hey, it's really great to have you guys on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, uh, you guys actually pulled it off. You you have made a movie. I, I just can't believe that that. <sighs> You had so many things to get get worked out, and you organized so many people because this thing has a, a cast of well hundreds <laughs> to be on the show. And I'll tell you, it's 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 just really something else, you know, to think that you guys pulled this off. And I am really tickled to have you guys on the show today to talk about this. Uh, so now I, I, I'm just really curious. Can you tell me um, just real briefly? Uh, the um, Reader's Digest and dense version of the plot, just enough to get people interested in uh, seeing what the movie's about. Either one of you. We have a little synopsis. Can we read that? Or you yeah, yeah, go ahead. All right, you want me to do it my my my, my radio voice? Do your radio voice. That, right, yeah, that's what we want to see. That's what we want to hear. Epic eighties trailer voice too. Okay. In a world. <laughs> Let's try. It. Raised in a torn home. One girl discovers she has the ability to make big changes with even bigger consequences. Innove, with the loyal help of her innocent little sister, Anastasia, form an army of young, bloodthirsty vampires to kill all the adults. No one is safe, especially the unaware mother of the children, Olivia, and the abusive, overbearing father figure, Dale Buckmeyer, which I play in the film. <laughs> Will Innove's dreams become a reality? Will Anastasia escape the cult before it's too late? Will the angry mob put an end to the insanity? Well, with performances by Butch Patrick, Jameson Newlander, Lloyd Kaufman, Count Smokula, and I know you know who that is, Sal, the Vampire, Santa Lizard, and many others, Young Blood is guaranteed to keep you on the edge of your seat and forever remind parents to respect <laughs> their children. <laughs> That's the best I can do. Very good. <laughs> Very good. That's the best I can do because otherwise I'll be rambling on for like thirty minutes. I can't, I can't truly describe the film to you. You, you just kind of have to watch it. It's so much to it. Yeah, so. yeah. How, how long have you guys been working on this? Um, we went into um, December the sixteenth is when we officially went into production. Mm -hmm. um, I've been playing with the script about a year prior to that, you know, before that, and we finally decided, oh, hey, we got to jump on this script. Hey, we got the, you know, we got the children are growing up. You know, you know, do this now. Yeah, you know, I, I can imagine that'd be a problem because you know, if the children get too bigger, this, this the scenes are not cut together. <laughs> yeah, I had to get it all done then. You yeah, know, so. yeah. That was wild. It was really it was tough putting together. So. Yeah, that's really cool. So now, uh, it, have you guys ever done a movie before? Is this something new for you guys? This is our first feature length film. I mean, we've played around and made some short films, but. Not necessarily for the intention for anyone to really watch. It's kind of for our own mm -hmm. fun. But, um, you know, I have previous acting skills. I used to perform and, you know, play over a dozen plays since my freshman year yeah. of high school. And, yeah. um, you know, Magna Vista. And then my, my brother, he, you know, has been doing the 
videography for weddings and weddings reunions. Yeah, you have a uh, business uh, with uh, Smithsonian. Smithsonian videography. Yeah, yeah. United Weddings Reunions. I filmed some some great yeah. live music acts, including uh, G. Tom Mack, um, Damian Morley, Stephen Morley, and uh, Bunny Whaler, some reggae legends, and mm -hmm. um, just some real great events and things. It's, 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 and um, it, you know, it's nice. Well, what do you think is different about doing a movie than doing like an event photography? I know um, when you do something that's like a wedding or a concert or something mm -hmm. like that, what you see is what you get. Yeah, you that's know? what you get. It's not yeah. scripted out. Um, you know, at the movie, you gotta say, "Hey, stop, come back. Let's do this again this way. Let's try this." You know, um, these events. It's hey, if there's a mistake, that's just what happens. Yeah. You know. Just go with it. Well, now when you watch a movie, you know you see like close-ups of people, and then the, the wide shots, and then reaction shots. You know, uh, if you're wondering what a reaction shot is, is when somebody's talking to someone, and the other one is going nodding her head and going with reaction shots and things mm -hmm. like that. Now, you know, most people would think that there's like a whole bevy of cameras, like on a, a new set or something mm -hmm. like this. But now you do all this with one show, you know, with one camera. So okay. what's the um, sort of technique you use to be able to put a movie together? Well, some takes we'll just have to read, you know, do this shot and do that. But some things I do have a second camera and we'd film like if it was a real expensive shot mm -hmm. or if it was something real crazy, real like a special stunt. effects, yeah. stunts. You know, we'd make sure to have some backup cameras on it too. So there were times where we used more than one camera, but for the most part it was just one camera angle and we just try to try it from different angles and edit it together. So you had some stunts uh, in this movie, didn't you? A few, few yeah. little stunts. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. How, well, how, how did that work? Um, well, I hate to give anything away, really. That's <laughs> that's kind of the thing. But when you when you when you do see the movie, though, there yeah. there are a few there are a few small things in there. Basically, anything that if you only have one shot at it, you know, you want to go ahead and for sure try to get two camera angles. Yeah. You know. Well, now, I do want to remind folks that uh, at the end of this show, we're going to show the uh, official trailer for the movie. So this will really get your uh, appetite whetted. Now, you guys uh, have um, put this up on um, uh, Facebook. Now, there's one thing that has really been uh, really impressive to me, how you guys have have utilized social media. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I think you started things out with... Um, uh, the, the Kickstarter, and yeah. then you. Uh, uh, I, I know every single t time when when you have something going on, because I, I got ten on your mailing list. Yeah. You know, you tell when you know. Well, can we need extras for the, for this? We're going to be here at this point. We're going to be here the other. Um, and uh, I, I think that 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 I don't know if you guys would have been able to pull this off if it wasn't for Facebook. What do you think? I mean, maybe not. I mean, we started out with our first, you know, script reading. We had to Mm -hmm. you know, Facebook, that's how we got our first you know, people there, so that's how we kind of marketed all our, our scenes that we needed extras for. Yeah. You know, yeah. Casting calls and so forth. All right, I'd like to invite the audience if you'd like to call in and talk to uh, Matt and Byron. Myron. I, I think more call you Byron. I, 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 I think everybody does, don't they? Yeah, too, not Myron, too okay. Uh, uh, and I and I, did, I I know better now. I keep telling myself I'm not going to say Byron. I'm not going to say Byron. And I go, Byron? No, Byron. <laughs> Somebody's going to call in now. So I have a question for Byron. <laughs> Speaking of which, if you'd like to, to call in and uh, talk with these folks about the movie and anything in general, just give us a call. And uh, you know, let me put this number up here so you can uh, give them a call. And the number to call is 632-5433, or if you're calling out of the area, the number to call is 866 670 Five four eight nine. If you'd like to call and uh, talk to these uh, these 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 uh, filmmakers, um, so um, uh, you know, I'm trying to think. Um, oh, my, my 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 mind is just went blank. Um, the the two brother, the Cohen brothers. You, you know, do you guys see yourselves? Uh, you know, sort of like uh, um, the, the aspiring Cohen brothers. You know. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm familiar with uh, Are you talking the comedians? No. Or the, or the, no, the, the uh, directors? Yeah, the directors that made uh, um, uh, Fargo and, and things like that. Okay. I know about the Hughes brothers. I've heard of them. The, the no, no. Society and 
Yes. Navy fan. No, the Cohen brothers. Uh, well, I thought I, th- I thought you guys would have known all about these. Oh, yeah, guys. there's no telling what we'll do next. We've been uh, coming up with all are, kinds of things. Uh, these are th- these are two brothers, and I love their movies. And the only thing that's coming to my mind right now is Fargo. And uh, they're two brothers, and they've been making movies for a long time together. And um, I think they made. Uh, uh, I'm just drawing a blank, but there's you know there's several movies that, that, that they that they have made. I think, I think yes, I know for sure they made the uh, the, the the remake of True Grit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'd we need to get out it. more. We're yeah. looking to, we've been so busy working on this yeah. movie the past yeah. year, we hadn't like hardly really seen anything. Well, the first time I saw the two of you guys uh, working together, that's the first thing I thought of. Well, they, you know, these, you know, this is Martin's answer to the Coen Brothers. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, that's pretty cool. You know, you know, we've got some um, location shots here, uh, and let's, you know, let's see if we can put some of these up and. Uh, talk about them and those of you who are listening on radio we're going to give you a commentary of the things that we're going to be talking about here uh let's see if i can get this to come up here okay and that makes nice black <laughs> uh don't touch that dial folks. there we go there we go so who, 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 what, what do we have here <laughs> this is zoe cox who plays anastasia mm-hmm. um, the innocent little sister of um, the other girl in the movie, Anna Bay. Anna Bay, we'll see a picture of that coming. Yeah. Not that I forgot. I was just gonna wait till we saw a picture. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know that makes sense. Now, what you know, one thing that really amazed me, and I was really honored to to be a part of some of your extra scenes, and I remember this. Uh, we shot this over on uh, Starling Avenue. This was right after the big church scene, mm-hmm. and. Um, so, um, you know, all, all of these signs, did you guys make these signs? Well, we made most of them, and then we had some um, people who also made some signs. I know I would like to credit some people, but I know I can't mention everybody who made their own signs. Yeah, yeah, but, go ahead. But I do know that there are, you know, several people that did, you know, make their own signs. But we sat and made a lot of them, and we did also put a post, I remember, out there for people to to make their own signs too but. yeah and to help come up with some suggestions too for the signs yeah uh, and then you had these chanting things be a bud don't drink blood yeah, yeah. <laughs> now uh, those of you that are listening on radio uh, this uh, movie is uh, was shot in Martinsville and uh, it really drew a crowd uh, because you see all these people walking down the streets uh, with these anti-vampire signs, and you don't know what it is. You think, well, what in the world is going on here? All these folks out here. Uh, <laughs> all the cars passing by. Yeah, and what? Yeah. Taking pictures and slowing down. Did you ever have anybody stop and say, what, what in the world is going on here? We almost had somebody have an accident, I think, that day because somebody um, kind of hit their brakes to pull in. You know, they. I guess they saw us, and then they you they can join in the fun. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. Let's see what else we got here. Um, so we got everybody. Uh, we have we have a f- photograph of. Uh, uh, this looks like this was shot inside a schoolhouse. Now you had this. Uh, there is a lot of location shots here, and because the uh, main characters of this movie are middle school age, uh, a lot of it takes place in uh, an elementary school. Mm-hmm. And the uh, principal of the school is Eddie Munster, uh, <laughs> Butch Patrick. And so uh, tell us a little bit about how, the, how this worked out with the schools. Um, well, we tend to just go through with the school board. We had some people help us out and talk to them for us because... It's just obviously, I don't know, people get scared when they see us. No. <laughs> but, um, you know, we just, you know, you have a lot of networking there, and, it, you know, people did eventually, they get into the idea, and like, oh, this sounds like fun, let's do this, you know. Yeah. They're a little more open-minded, and they just jump on it, you know. Did you have uh, any sort of resistance to doing some of this? Because you're making a vampire movie, and people are, you're making a vampire movie, you yeah. know. Well, we definitely got some no's before we... Before we, you know, finally got a yes, so you know, yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't that easy. I was going to say about the Irisberg shoot, though, that was a really fun day because I know a lot of kids they got to um, get out of school that day, 
I know they had a lot of fun. Oh yeah. But, you know, yeah. I wish somebody was doing something like that when when we were kids. When we were kids, boy, that would be fun. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's go ransack a school. <laughs> <laughs> you well, know, we cleaned what, up after. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, now that's true. I, I can recall the times where uh, I think I, I I was with you guys about three times, and you know, you were real careful to make sure that you left things the way you found them. Exactly. And uh, uh, there's one thing too. I've, I've really been really inundated with looking at uh, some of the f- Facebook posts. You guys have, uh, have have got like all kinds of artwork about this. Now, uh, uh, is there an artist that's helping you draw this? Because this, uh, you know, we, you know, we, we have a, f- a photograph of a poster on the uh, screen right now, and it looks like someone drew that. And uh, uh, who else has been helping you with the artwork? This particular painting is from uh, Leslie Sage. Um, there's um, now our movie, uh, our movie poster, the one that is featured most prominently. Mm-hmm. That one's painted by Leon Atkinson the third, and um, he's uh, from here in Martinsville. Um, you know, he's done some paintings for the Virginia Museum of Natural History for their uh, Ice Age exhibit. That was a, some years back. I can't remember which year that was, but they were, you know, on the front when they still were at the old building. But um, I know Leslie Sage is the name of this artist, and I believe this one is an acrylic. And um, I think it might be acrylic and ink. But, yeah, it's a very nice painting. And where is she from? Is she from London? Or I think so. I know she's from the U.K., but I'm not sure if it's London. But. Yeah, so, you know, with the Facebook and social networking, you know, we got people in other countries looking yeah. at it. They can't wait to see it. Yeah, that, that's just real. Well, you see, that's how, that's how you found me. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> I'd, uh, uh, I have a friend of mine who sent me a post, and the first time I saw this, I think it was the... Um, it was pictures of the mob scene out uh, in front of, um, um, I guess it was out I'm there. In front of Jefferson Plaza. Yeah, yeah, in front yeah. Of Hugo's in the yeah, Daily Grind. Yeah. Yes. And then so when I saw that, I thought, well, this is really cool. And then uh, somebody asked me to um, uh, to be their Facebook friend. They said, be sure to like uh, the Young Blood Facebook page. And from I think I think here's a picture of that. Jefferson Plaza shoot. I think this was one of the uh, uh, photographs that, 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 that got me interested in, in uh, finding out more about your, 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 the, the movie that you've got here. Now, you know, was this one of the first uh, location shots that you had? Yeah, it was. It was the first um, big scene that we had with a lot of um, different people involved. We actually had one right before in the hair salon. Yeah. And yeah, and um, Creative hair design yeah. on Reeves Road, but this is way you know. There's about eight extras involved with that scene. This one, I think we had about thirty. I mean, it was averaged almost about fifty people at one point. Wow! You know, when they first got there. And that's one thing that that's been really interesting. How so many people will do this as a labor of love. I mean, everybody, mm-hmm. you, you know, is 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 doing this volunteer, and you have so many people that that that. Uh, just want to be a part of it, and uh, it, you know it's been a lot of fun. A lot of people have had a lot of uh, 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 you know a lot of fun helping you with this, and uh, it is really cool to uh, think of this being a, a community project. And uh, I think it's really cool because we're coming up on Halloween now, and we and we got a good uh, homegrown horror movie. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe that might be a name for your uh, production company one day. Call it homegrown horror. <laughs> Uh, yeah, even you, even you came to be a part of the film. Yeah, uh, there is a. Uh, I, I, I really think it's pretty cool. I got to be um, in, in, in one of the church scenes, and I actually had a line, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, I, I was real. Uh, uh, there it is right there, the church scene. If you look, uh, those of you that are watching television, if you look at the uh, far, uh, I guess the far right-hand corner, uh, about like uh, three rows in, you'll see my face there. And then, uh, of course, and I was really honored when you... Uh, uh, included my little scene in the uh, official trailer yes. w- with the immortal words. <laughs> uh, what are we gonna do, preacher? <laughs> uh, that was that was fun, and uh, you know, you guys, I, I 
was really wondering how you pulled that off. Uh, you know, the church, you know, the, w- w- was w- was was supportive of you doing this too. How did that work out? Same thing, much of knows what you get a yes. Yeah, yeah. What were you gonna say? That was yeah. I was gonna say that was probably the most difficult one because I know I spoke with, um, you know, two different ones, and you know they kind of made me. You know, they kind of at the last minute said, "Well, they don't think this will be good for their church." Yeah, you know? and that's I, I can understand that. So, but um. We definitely, you know, do appreciate that they were definitely, you know, working with us and allowed us to do it. You know, that was very yeah. nice. Of them. Yeah. But um, we definitely made sure we, you know, again, you know, cleaned up after ourselves with that and everything went over pretty smooth. And I'm happy with that. But um, yeah, as anybody can imagine, that it's definitely not easy. Yeah. You know, you know I think it's too. Um, I think it's a whole lot the way people have an attitude of. Uh, about Halloween in general, about how it's so oh, it's just this terrible holiday and stuff like that. No, it's not. You know, I, I think I think that's part of uh, one of the best parts of your childhood is uh, is getting dressed up on Halloween and uh, uh, you're going trick or treating and wear and wearing wear a costume. And when you're making a, 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 a scary movie, mm-hmm. you know that's sort of Halloween for grown ups, isn't it? Well, yeah, in a way, I, and I'm hoping this year I'll see a lot of kids running around dressed like Anna Vay and Anastasia yeah. for Halloween. Hello, you're it's on the air. Uh, yes, I was just wondering how long the movie is supposed to last. The run time, it's an it's hour and 40 minutes. Okay, thank you. Right. You're welcome. Okay. And, um... Uh, you had a thought about Halloween. Go ahead and go on with that. <laughs> uh, I was just hoping we start a new trend and yeah. the kids, you know, I guess a lot of kids dress like vampires, but yeah. specifically it's supposed to be them. I like to see a lot of these kids, too, trying to make movies of their own, too, because, I mean, I'm sure seeing somebody local from the area making the movie might make them, you know, want to express themselves in, in artistic ways. And about Halloween, I, I do think, you know, a lot of kids really aren't really aren't experiencing that anymore. Yeah. So that is, that's a good point. To point. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, Jamie and your guests. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Good, thank you. Look, there was a uh, slight delay uh, when you came on uh, when you came on the air, slight delay on the radio, so I missed the introduction. You're talking about a, uh, a movie that was made in Martinsville? Yeah, yes. yeah, and, and these are the filmmakers right here, Matt and Myron Smith. I got it right. That <laughs> I keep calling Myron Byron. And uh, <laughs> okay, and when when was this when was this shot or made? Well, tell me. When was that. this done? Well, that, the first script reading, uh, like he was saying earlier, we had our first script reading on December sixteenth. So I guess that's probably when it officially went into production. Okay. And, and we just wrapped up about a month ago, and. Um, finally got a world premiere day at the Reeves Theater, so we're real excited about that. Oh, okay then. Well, um, thank you then, and uh, I'll continue to listen. All right. We'll hope to see you at okay, the premiere. Okay, bye-bye. And uh, yeah. let me be sure to remind the folks here that the uh, premiere of Young Blood: Evil Intentions is going to be Friday, September 21st at 9 p.m. with an encore showing on Saturday, September 22nd at 9 p.m. And that's going to be at the Reeves Theater in downtown Martinsville or Uptown Martinsville. I, I, you know, the, you know, we want to be sure to say that correctly, Uptown Martinsville. And if you'd like to get tickets, there are uh, several places where you can get tickets. You can get tickets for $7, and they're available at Stafford's Music and Woodall's Music. And also, What's Your Sign? Uh, that's at uh, the 27 East Church Street uh, between Bill's Jewelers and uh, Arts, etc. And also, uh, those of you who are around the uh, North Carolina end of our uh, coverage area, down in Eden, North Carolina, you can also get uh, tickets at Screaming Ink Tattoo. All right, uh, pretty good. Hey, if uh, someone would like to give us a call here, the number to call to be on the show is 632-5433. If you're calling out of the area, 866-670-5489. And 
we have our guests today, uh, Matt and uh, Myron Smith, who are the uh, producers, directors, and writers of the movie uh, that's going to be premiering here locally, uh, that was shot by, uh, locally here, uh, Young Blood, Evil Intentions. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, good evening. Good evening. How y'all doing? Doing good. great. How about yourself? I'm doing wonderful. This is Cindy G. Price. Hey, I'm Cindy. so thankful to be an actress in the movie, Young Blood. I play a grandmother of a little girl named Nicole. The movie is dynamic. It's got so many different attributes to it, from horror to gore to laughter. It's just really, really dynamic. I'm looking so forward to it coming to the big screen. All right. Thanks. You are, too. Thank you. Thank y'all, and I'm excited. Okay. I'll see y'all soon. Bye-bye. Thanks right. for calling in. And that's Cindy here. Now, we're going to go to a commercial break, and uh, I have a, a, a clip from the unofficial trailer. Now, we're going to have the official trailer at the end of the show where Cindy is featured, and we're going to go out with this commercial break with uh, Cindy in action here uh, as we go right, into go. the um, uh, commercial break. And we'll be back right after this, okay? Yeah! What, you better not mess with me. The whole student body is going to the nurse's office. I'll be right over. Thanks, sir. Anyway, get in here now! At Collinsville Furniture Mart, we're proud of our large selection of American-made bedroom and living room collections. We're especially proud of our Vaughn Bassett bedroom suits. Based in Galax, Virginia, Vaughn Bassett Furniture has grown to be the largest manufacturer of wooden adult bedroom furniture in the United States, with 95% of their furniture being made by workers here in America. 99% of the lumber that they use comes from within 500 miles of the factory. And thanks to Vaughn Bassett's one-for-one -one program, one tree gets planted for every tree they use. Here at Collinsville Furniture Mart, we strongly believe in supporting local economies like Vaughn Bassett. Because of our strong relationships with companies like Vaughn Bassett, we are able to provide our customers with unmatched service, quality, and value while keeping good jobs here in the United States. Come see us, Collinsville Furniture Mart, top of the hill in Collinsville. Do you have a car, a truck, a house, or a trailer you want to sell? Maybe you're looking for a fishing boat or a motorcycle. How about a home for that litter of puppies that the family dog just had? Or maybe you have a small business, you work out of your home, and nobody knows what you do. Well, the Martinsville Media Classifieds are for you. The program airs six days a week, Monday through Saturday, live in the mornings on WHEE and WMVA radio stations and on TV 40. And it replays in the evenings on TV 40 for maximum exposure. And we'll advertise your items or your services for only $15 a week. That's $15 a week. It's simple. Just go to our website at martinsvillemedia.com and click on the forum, purchase your classified with a credit card online. Or call us at 632-2152. Again, that's martinsvillemedia.com. Click on forum or call us at 632-2152. Don't waste time. Call today. The best value in country club membership is Forest Park Country Club, located at the end of beautiful Tree Line Mulberry Road. And our special membership rate is just $100 a month. Forest Park Country Club is open to the public as well. This course will challenge every part of your golf game. Come join us at the park. 18 holes of play, $17 Monday through Thursday, $23 Friday through Sunday. A $15.50 Tuesday special for the ladies and a $15.50 Thursday special for seniors 60 and over. Walk in subject to tee time availability. Call the Pro Shop for tee times. The telephone number at 276 632 
1711. Forest Park Country Club is conveniently located at 1821 Mulberry Road in Martinsville. Give us a call if you have any questions, 632-1711. But more importantly, get out those golf clubs and come join us for a round at the park. If you're looking for a good deal on a set of new or used tires, then we invite you to come by and see Gill's Tires, located conveniently at 711 Memorial Boulevard in Martinsville. At Gill's Tires, we specialize in used tires, and when it comes to tires, we know quality, and we take pride in making you a satisfied customer. We're ready to meet any of your tire needs. Harry Gill has years of experience in the tire industry, so rest assured that your vehicle is fitted properly. Good tires improve gas mileage and reduce service costs. So call Gill today, 618-2048 or 632-0836. We look forward to being of service. Harvey Gardner has been in business for over 28 years, and he's worked for most of the major furniture companies and also for local furniture stores. He does sofas, chairs, and recliners, and he has cloth fabric and vinyl in stock and sample books to choose from. Look at this Martinsville Media Couch before and look at it after, just like brand new. He also makes headboards for beds and cornices for windows, and he has all different thicknesses of foam rubber for seats and backs. And Gardner's Upholstery specializes in churches. They do church pews and chairs, putting on new fabric and new seat foam padding. Call Gardner's Upholstery today. They're located on the Oak Level Road beside the Bassett Country Club. 340-3225. That's 340-3225. Gardner's Upholstery. New fabrics for a new look. Not really alive. His eyes look like stones planted in his head. Maybe she's right. He really is dead. Oh, oh, oh. he's a zombie. Oh, oh, oh. a zombie. I bobo they sing and they start up the dance. He walks in a circle, he must be in a dance. You say hello, he just looks blank. His skin's like a steel of a vault in a bank. Oh, 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 oh. he's a zombie. Been dead once, but he's been alive twice. Oh, a zombie! Oh, a zombie! And you're probably thinking, what in the world does that have to do with anything? Well, one of the characters that uh, is in uh, Matt and Myron's movie is um, Count Smokula. Count Smokula. <laughs> All right, here. Um, so, uh, tell me now, what is the deal here with this Count Smokula here? What, 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 who is this guy? <laughs> uh, he, he is a character, man. He is a, he's a great musician, accordion player. He plays it all. Um, he was gracious enough to do a song for us for the movie. Um, along with the radioactive chicken heads who are also in that video. <laughs> the radioactive uh, chicken heads. <laughs> yeah, you got to look into them if you hadn't seen them yet. So they also did a song. Well, they didn't do a song specific for it, but they let us use the song. <laughs> Now, so uh, excited about that. Yeah, yeah. Now, did I hear that uh, Count Smokula uh, 
wrote a song specifically for uh, uh, yes. the movie? Yes, it's called tell, Young Blood. Tell me about that. Uh, it's a great song. Um, breaks out all those elements. It's got the accordion there. It's electric a, guitar. Electric guitar. Um, plays bass on it, too. A yeah. lot of the songs are really, you know, comedy based, and mm-hmm. this one's a little more serious. It's a little something, another mm-hmm. level of something I haven't heard from him. Yeah, I love it. It's great. Yeah. yeah, it definitely sounds. If you look at his YouTube videos, the new song he wrote for the movie definitely has yeah. a different sound to it. And look, he has a very diverse style. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, he sort of reminds me of. Um, I don't know if you remember this, uh, because. Um, uh, you know, you're not as long in a tooth as I am. Mm-hmm. But there used to be a cartoon about an anteater. Mm-hmm. And it sounds exactly like Count Smokula. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, um, yeah, I, he, he, he just really reminded me a whole lot of that. I also wanted to give another shout out to another guy, um, Eric Anders. Who was, okay. He's out that way too in LA, and he wrote another. He wrote a song for us too, also called Young Blood. Mm-hmm. They're both just really great songs. And yeah. So we got two songs called Young Blood. Wow, yeah. it, so many different levels of artistry has uh, come into the formation of this movie. You've got mm-hmm. people doing artwork for you. You got people writing songs. You know, you got people. Characters like uh, Count Smokula in it and so mm-hmm. forth like that. And that's one thing about filmmaking is that it is the only art that uh, incorporates all arts. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, music, uh, drama, uh, art, uh, then the uh, craft of making a film. All of these things uh, come to pass when you are making a film. And, and, uh, props and backdrops. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. And now, um, well, now when you think of the the movie biz, you think about the uh, big budget Hollywood studios. But now, with the advent of affordable, high uh, quality cameras and video editing software, more and more filmmakers are are tempted to make uh, independent films. But now, in the uh, genre of horror movies, there's one man that stands out as a mentor to young filmmakers in the horror movie biz, and that man is named Lloyd Kaufman. Now, which who who happened who incidentally happens to do a, a few cameos in uh, Young Blood, Evil Intentions. Now, back in 1974, Lloyd Kaufman and his business partner uh, Michael Hertz. Uh, founded a production company called Troma Entertainment, and they cranked out a string of darkly funny horror films. Now, back in 1985, uh, Kaufman began uh, began producing the uh, Toxic Avenger movie series and experienced some mainstream uh, success in that. And um, besides the uh, Toxic Avenger movies, uh, another hit that you know some folks might remember uh, is the. Uh, class of Newcomb High. And so we have a picture of uh, Kaufman up here. Myron, maybe you can tell me what this picture's about here. Well, this picture was taken on the set of the return to class of Newcomb High, yeah? which I'm very excited about that because the original class of Newcomb High really is one of my favorite movies, and Lloyd Kaufman is a big inspiration to the both of us. And Without his films, we would have never really, I think, realized it we have the ability to make films because yeah. a lot of people think of that as something that's very unattainable yeah. but you can make your own movie you know as a matter of fact Lord Kaufman has wrote a book that he's selling right now make your own damn movie yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if I was allowed to say that yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead yeah. yes it's, it's a very uh, popular um, book too yeah. I've read it cover to cover it's yeah. very interesting yeah. um, but well I don't want to get too much into that but um, definitely um, and this is um, I'm going to be in the return to class in Newcomb High. Um, Lloyd Kaufman plays a news anchor in the film. Uh, in Young Blood, Evil Intentions, yeah. that is. And um, I'm really glad to be in his recent film. You know, I traveled to New York, and that um, in the in the movie, if you see the original class in Newcomb High, there's a group of kids called the Cretans that are supposed to be like the delinquent kids. So here I have my, you know, my eye makeup. Yeah, so I was going to ask you, what's up with the eyebrows there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Lloyd is definitely, um, he's great to be around. He, he's definitely, he was a fun person to meet. And, you know, as you can see, he's very animated, which he is very animated in the film. Yeah. 
So, so how did you meet Lloyd? Well, basically, I, you know, discovered that they were doing casting for the Return to Class in Newcomb High. I've always wanted to be in a trauma film. Um, you know, never be, really been on the set of a movie with uh, that type of, you know, production. It's, um, it's definitely, you know, even though it's not Hollywood, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, it's kind of somewhere in between. It's independent cinema. Yeah. You know, at its, yeah, but he's been doing it a lot longer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. almost 40 years. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that something? Well, you know, uh, one of the real um, uh, popular genres in um, independent filmmaking is, of course, the vampire movies. And uh, there's all kinds of vampire movies that have um, uh, sort of captured the hearts and minds of people. And uh, one of the real cult movies that I thought was really interesting was the film Lost Boys. And now, um, uh, Jameson Newlander, uh, of all of those uh, who are fans of vampire genres, uh, they're certainly going to remember the uh, 1987 classic, The Lost Boys. Well, guess what? One of the uh, Lost Star, uh, the, the stars of uh, Lost Boys, Jameson Newlander, uh, you, you might remember he uh, played Alan Frog in, in this movie. Well, uh, he's also in Matt and Myron's movie, Young Blood, Evil Intentions. Now, 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 how do you get stars like this to be in your movie? Well, well we met Jameson at a, um, at a convention, and um, we, we spent a lot of time talking to him. They, they weren't sold on it right away, but we got to talking to him and explaining the script. They really liked that, and... You know, I met uh, several of the guys from the Lost Boys movie, including uh, G. Tom Mack, who did the music from it. And, you know, I filmed that for him there. And, you know, we just basically got the likeness. We had him kind of convinced there towards the end. So he played the role of the mayor, and we filmed that right there at Virginia Beach mm -hmm. and uh, tied it right on into the movie. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, those of you who are watching TV right now, uh, we have a uh, photograph of... Uh, uh, Jameson as uh, one of the as the playing the character of uh, 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 the, Alan, the, Alan Frog, Frog and then um, uh, the, we've got a contemporary picture. And I, I think uh, Jameson is forty two now. I think that's about. Oh, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. No, no. And so uh, it looks, you know, it looks kind of funny. It looks like you're looking at uh, you know, this man and his father. <laughs> time goes about 1987. I didn't think he looked today over 30, 30 when I met him. But, you know, yeah, I, none I, of those guys, you know. I wonder how old he was when he was in Lost Boys. What, 17, 18 years old, maybe? Somewhere yeah. around there, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that cool? And he's also in the second and the, and the third. Came back and did the sequel and the, yeah. the third as well. So. Yeah. How is he to work with? Is he, is he, is he a pretty nice guy? Oh, he was fun. I mean, yeah. it, was, you know, it was a real laid-back experience. You know, yeah. kind of I got a video on YouTube also. It's kind of hidden right now, but we got Brooke McCarter. He was one of the vampires in the movie. and He's playing the drums, and I was rapping to it because I... I used to be a rapper before I was a movie director. Um, <laughs> We're in a rap group together. <laughs> yeah, we were both were, and it's um, it's hidden right now. But I might make it live tonight. You know, those would be curious. Can, you know, can you give me a little rapping? Ah, uh, well, it's, it's it's hard to do it with the clean language. <laughs> on the radio here. Yeah, it might be bad for business. <laughs> you don't have a little beat thing to go on. And... Oh no! Oh, white TV and. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it's the too hard. It's too it's hard not to. Yes, it's hard enough. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put and, you and on that the spot. That beat was so like so seventies. So seventies. Oh gosh, you know, in, in that, <laughs> yeah, I can tell. I am definitely a seventies kind of guy. Well, I'll tell you now. There is no movie that is uh, complete without. Um, having um, a pretty girl in the movie. And so we have um, um, Sierra Holmes. Let me tell you about Sierra Holmes. Now, you know, in, in addition to being in the cast of Young Blood, uh, again, uh, someone who is no stranger to the horror movie genre, uh, Sierra is best known for her appearances on VH1 Scream Queens, uh, Reality Hell. Now, that was a TV series back in uh, 2009. And also Scream Queens 2. 
back in 2010, last year. And this year's release, uh, release of uh, Scary Story Slumber Party. Now, there is a, a segment in there called Unlucky, and she played in the uh, Unlucky segment. <laughs> and also this year, uh, she's coming off a um, film credit of uh, Piranha 3DD. And uh, they're coming out soon is uh, Legacy of the Mast and Night of the Cannibal. And of course, Youngblood's Evil Intentions. Now, Tell me, how is how, how is she to work with? Boy, oh, she's a real looker. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, she's she's real fun to work with, man. She's very energetic and, and excited about working. You know, these young actors are very inspired. And, and I, I saw it was your turn, but this is this one person we got in there, and you know, just really it really had fun to work with. I really hope we can work with her in the future if there's any possibilities. Yeah. At the time, I think she was in Ohio. Now she's all the way out in L.A. really doing the thing. So we might have to come to her. She might have to come all the way out here. But, yeah, yeah. You know, hopefully she'll remember us and, yeah. and want to get involved with our next film. Well, that's pretty cool. That really is. Now, this right here is just creepy. <laughs> <laughs> that just, that's just creepy. Okay, uh, now, th- this is a guy named Sal Lizard. And... Uh, he, he, he's a vampire Santa. Now, now that is such a twisted combination, Christmas and Halloween. <laughs> um, Sal Lizard is uh, uh, from the Hillbilly Bob Zombie and our creature from the Hillbilly Lagoon. Now, now how does Sal Lizard fit into the storyline? Well, he's obviously he's a vampire. He's, uh, he, he's somebody that we, you know, I, well... We had him, when you see the scene earlier, when you have the angry mob scene mm-hmm. with all of the people protesting the vampires, he's he's one of the few who basically is pro-vampire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. Santa Claus doesn't see anything wrong with it. There shouldn't be nothing wrong with it, right? That's right. <laughs> That's right. But I don't know. Yeah, Santa, I mean, this is, a, you know, those of you watching TV are probably creeped out right now. This is Santa Claus with vampire fangs and black eyes. Ugh. Yeah, it's the stuff <laughs> nightmares are made out of, that's for sure. You know, that, the, you know, that is such a, a, a disturbing image right there. Santa Claus, you know, gone bad. Not bad Santa, I suppose, yeah. I had a friend that he's a uh, Santa Claus, too, and yeah. I sent him a picture of that, and well, I had a slew of Santa Clauses coming at me, like, hey, this is this ain't cool. We have the same friend. It's going to uh, scare kids. Yeah. I'm like, this movie's yeah. not going to scare kids. It's going to scare adults. <laughs> and they're going to be scared of kids. <laughs> you know, sort of like the Children of the Damned. You yeah. know, yeah. Oh, 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 no. Well, corn. there's that and Children, children of the Corn. Children, children of the corn. corn. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that turned around. Children of Corn. I think there is a Children of the Damned. But th- there is, yeah. there is. You know, yeah. they, you know, they had glowing eyes mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I remember that maybe. Now, uh, you know, you know, we have some local celebrities too here. Uh, now, uh, there are uh, folks around here that have been here <clears throat> as long as I have. They probably are familiar with this gentleman right here. Uh, Cletus Earls plays the part of. Uh, Sheriff Bacon. Now, the folks are probably going to remember him from the Martinsville Henry County Rescue Squad because he joined uh, all the way back when he was 16. He's been a lifelong member, and um, you know he makes a good uh, he makes a good cop, don't he? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. he pulled it off well. Yeah, pretty much so. But now, probably the most famous person that uh, you know the folks that the, the the person that people are going to identify with the most here is uh, Butch Patrick. Now, when I was growing up, one of my favorite shows was The Munsters. And uh, so now, do you, do, you, do you remember that show? Yeah, of course you do. You know, you remember little Eddie Munster? Well, Eddie Munster uh, was played by an actor by the name of uh, Butch Patrick. And believe it or not, Butch Patrick, a.k.a. Eddie Munster, is uh, playing the role of principal in Youngblood, Evil Intentions. But now... Um, Really, you know, uh, I don't want to, to completely typecast here uh, Butch Patrick as Eddie Munster because he's done a lot of things. He's been in shows like Bonanza and My Favorite Martian and Rawhide and The Real McCoys and General Hospital and lately, you know, Blood Evil Intentions. Now, now I believe that uh, Butch Patrick lives on the West Coast, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Well, well, now, did... did 
did did he come here for the movie? Man, he, he didn't come here. We had, to, we had to try to find a way to come to him. And so now, this, I, you know, that you know, is what I wanted to open that up for. How did you incorporate someone who lives 3,000 miles away in a movie here on the East Coast? How did that work? Well, just with today's technology, you can kind of get with people and contact them. And we just got up with the script, talked a lot, and, hey, this is how I want it to be. We're going to do this. And he, he had a good system, a director, a photographer there that, Films things with him, Ethan Tudor W. I'd like to give him a shout out too. Yeah. And um, and he filmed the scenes there for us, and kind of sit there and work back and forth on it, and just pulled that one off that way. <laughs> <laughs> now, did but the, you'd never know it. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, uh, and I think, uh, did you do the same thing with uh, Lord Kaufman? Well, he's the news anchor. Yeah. So when you see him, you know, he's talking to the audience like we are right now, and then. You know, we go to the scene. You know. And, uh, you know, one thing people will probably get a kick out of, right now there is a uh, there is a prop of yours still mm-hmm. stuck on the door here. We noticed that. Uh, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the studio part was filmed right here at uh, WYAT TV Studios, and so we were real tickled to, uh, to, to, <laughs> to have uh, uh, you guys over here and have the station be a part of the, of the movie. And so when you see Lloyd Kaufman, you'll see him, like, on the set, and then the kids mob the uh, studio, and then you see uh, our our cameras and our studio here and, and mm-hmm. I think I, I'm even running one of the cameras. <laughs> and a little star on the yeah. door and that's still there. Yeah. I, 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 I wish I, I could uh, turn this camera around so people could see this star but there's a there's a star that says Lloyd that's still on the door here and uh, you know kind of cool. Alright um, let's see here what else we got coming up here next. Um, we're going to take a break, and I think we've got some more guests uh, that are going to be on the uh, um, that that are stars in the movie. And if I can persuade them, I'm going to have them on the set in the next segment, and we're going to interview the the um, stars of uh, Young Blood, Evil Intentions. And we're going to do that. And there's going to be much more right after this. So you stay with me, and we'll be back right after we do this. Okay. I don't see why you have to be so hard on anybody. She thinks she's a vampire, threatens to kill me all the time. She's weird. You can never tell Mom and Dale about this. Here, you're going to need this. Hi, I'm Mallory from Jim Mills Chrysler Dodge G, located conveniently across from the Martinsville Speedway. Did you know that Jim Mills has been in business for over 53 years locally? We offer a lifetime warranty on all new vehicles sold. We also offer free Virginia State inspections to any vehicle, new or pre-owned, as well as a Carfax on any pre-owned vehicle that we sell. If you are ready for a pleasant, comfortable car or truck sales experience, please call myself or one of our valued salespeople at 956-1211. Again, we're located across from the Martinsville Speedway. Thank you very much, and we appreciate your business. Have you been denied Social Security disability? If you have, don't give up. At Gardner, Barrow, Sharp, and Reynolds, we've helped hundreds of people get the disability benefits they deserve. Give us a call for a free evaluation of your claim. We're located at 231 East Church Street, the Fidelity Bank Building in Martinsville. And you can even get a free brochure concerning your Social Security disability rights by calling us. Our telephone number is 638-2455. That's Gardner, Barrow, Sharp, and Reynolds. Join us for New Live with Pastor Terry Knight and Sunday nights at 8 p.m. here on TV40. 
Time to eat, you want something good, but you don't know where to go. Pandora's Lunchbox invites you to come choose from our menu of food that satisfies the soul. We have daily specials. We also have contests. Fried chicken every day, plate lunches, veggie plate specials, delicious homemade desserts. Located at 101 Commonwealth Boulevard across from the Clock Building. Open Mondays and Tuesdays, 1030 to 6, and Wednesdays through Saturdays from 1030 until 8 p.m. Call your order in at 638-8800. Pandora's Lunchbox. I'm Buzz Aldrin, and over the years, I've learned that in space or on the ground, there is no substitute for experience. If you're a small business owner just getting started or trying to grow, contact SCORE, America's volunteer counselors to small business. They can help you in every aspect of your business, and it's free. Contact a SCORE counselor. Call 800-634-0245 or visit SCORE.org. Martinsville Scores, located in the Chamber of Commerce building on Braun Street. Counseling is available each Thursday at 12 noon on a first-come, first-served basis. Phone 632-6401 for more information. Not all storage centers are the same. Storage Center is the only all-indoor, climate-controlled storage facility in Martinsville, Henry County. With secure access 24 hours a day, loading docks for trucks and tractor trailers, pallet jacks and carts. Storage Center in Martinsville is not only excellent for personal storage, but is preferred for record-keeping, warehousing, and distribution. Storage Center, off Memorial at Lavender and Cellars, Martinsville. 276-670-7867. You shouldn't be messing around with things you don't understand. These kids want to suck our blood. Wow, that's pretty dramatic there. And uh, we have the stars of the show here. Um, Zoe Cox, who plays Anastasia. And um, Autumn Moore, who plays Anna Annave. The boy, those are some hard names. We're trying to figure out how to spell Anastasia, and uh, it took all three of us to write it down there. But now, Anave, you know, that's kind of an unusual name too. Let's see. Now, you are the uh, you are the villain in the movie, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about what's it like to play a a real bad girl. Well, that's certainly the um, complete opposite of my real, oh, real yeah, personality. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because um, not like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, tell me about that. Um, you know, you know, is it, how do you play a bad guy in a movie? Well, <clears throat> it's kind of hard, but also it's pretty fun because you get to experiment with different things. But, you know, it, yeah. Well, now you are, you <clears throat> see, so now you are the sweet, innocent one and. In, uh uh, your older sister corrupts you. Um, so now, you know, you start out being a, a, a good girl. Do you get to be just as bad as she is by the end? Yeah. Okay. So now, you know, how is it going from being a good person, like in this movie, and then kind of changing very slowly into an evil vampire? You just... <laughs> well... It's really she turns me into um, like mm-hmm. someone evil. Mm-hmm. Mm. And so now, do you like uh, uh, horror movies? You, you guys are big fans of horror movies, yeah, yeah. 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 <coughs> What's your favorite horror movie? Um, Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery. Stephen King. I, I, I love anything Stephen King does. How about you? Uh, Case Thirty Nine. Case Thirty Nine. Yeah, yeah. So now. Um, now you got to be a part of this movie. Um, you guys have never done anything like that before, have you? Have you? No. Well, now I've been seeing clips, and then I've uh, I've was on the uh, some of the crowd scenes, and I was really impressed with how professional you girls were. I mean, you guys, you know, you look like you've been acting all your life. Uh, as far as uh, someone who acts, you know, do you guys have a uh, Favorite actor that's close to your age that you'd like to be like, yeah. Um, 
Addie Miller? Yeah, Addie Miller. Yeah? Or Addie Miller. Yeah? Addie yeah. Miller. I just said that. Well, you know, you know, you guys both can have the same uh, same hero. I mean, there's a lot of people that that, that, that probably are into, into her. Um, so now, um, now when you uh, go to school and you uh, talk to uh, your friends about being in a movie, how, how do how do they react to that? Some of my friends never really believe me. Yeah. But like. When they see my file folder and stuff, because it has the sticker on it, yeah. and then they started believing me. Yeah. And that's about How about you, Autumn? <clears throat> well, mostly um, people bring it up to me, like, because they see it on Facebook, because they're my Facebook friends, and mm-hmm. they're like, you're in a movie? I'm like, yeah, it's called Youngblood. They're like, that's cool, you know. I wish I was in a horror movie. And I'm like, well, there's still some scenes left. Like, this was back when there was still scenes left. Mm-hmm. I told them <clears throat> that if their parents said it was okay, that they could come be in the scenes. Mm-hmm. Well, now, it, it's it hard learning all those lines. I mean, there's a lot of lines, you know. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, now, what was the, uh, you know, do you got a... Uh, are there times where you guys sort of flub up and everybody laughs and you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> can you you know is you know can you tell me any f- funny stories about being in a movie about um, you know some things that happened while you guys were on like the you know location you thought was funny? Uh, well, well, one time um, we were getting ready to film this scene and well. She kept farting, and I was like, <laughs> "I was like, stop farting!" And she's like, "I can't help it." <laughs> oh gosh! Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's. Uh... <laughs> Folks, uh, <laughs> okay, moving right along. <laughs> so now, you know, do you guys want to be uh, uh, professional actresses someday? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you know, do you want to do, you know continue to do horror films, or is there other kinds of films you'd like to do? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no what? No, you don't want to be in a horror film or no? No, I don't want to be in a horror, another horror film. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. there's too much blood. Too yeah. much blood and gush. So, so, but now, so now, would y'all use like um, like Cairo syrup and stuff like that, you know, for that? Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's real icky. You know, it, it probably looks really funny on uh, when, when you're doing it live, but on the movie it looks really scary. Yeah. 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 Because, but, but, because sometimes... Uh, uh, Matt and Myron make you do the same thing over and over again, over and yes. over and over again. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, a lot. And uh, you know they shoot it from different angles and yes. things like that, and it makes it makes it that way. Well, this is going to be really cool. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing the movie and uh, you know seeing you guys uh, on the movie. Uh, we're going to um, uh, take another commercial break here, and I, I really do thank you guys for coming on and being a part of the show here. And uh, I, 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 th- I think it's really cool because, uh, you know, you know, we, you know, we never would have known, um, um, you know, how, how it was from your perspective. These are the stars of the show, uh, and uh, uh, you know, I really want to encourage people to uh, to come see these young ladies perform in this horror movie, and it's pretty cool. It really is. And if you'd like to. Uh, uh, find out uh, you know more about where you can get tickets and so forth like that let me tell you this um you can pick up tickets at um uh let's see you can get tickets at um stafford's music center and woodall's music center and what's your sign uh, and that's at uh 27 east church street in uptown martinsville uh, between Bill's Jewelers and Arts, etc. And also, if you're uh, folks down in the area around uh, Eden, North Carolina, you can uh, also uh, pick them up at Screaming Ink Tattoo. And uh, the movie, uh, the world premiere, 
is going to be uh, Friday, September 21st at 9 p.m. with an encore performance on Saturday, September 22nd at 9 p.m. at the Reeves Theater at 215 East Church Street in Martinsville. And uh, we are we are we're so tickled that you guys could be on the show here f- with us today. And uh, I really look forward to uh, seeing you guys on the big screen. And uh, I, you know you are the you're the only two actresses I, I've, I've ever met. And so it's a real honor to to uh, to meet your uh, make your acquaintance. <laughs> and uh, well, we're going to take this commercial break, and we'll be back with more of the talk for the town right after this so you stay with us okay A delicious and unique dining experience awaits you at Rania's Restaurant, Bar and Grill. Rania's has the cure for your restaurant boredom. Our exciting menu offers flavors of Italian, Spanish, French, and American cuisine. Meet your friends for a cocktail around our fully stocked bar. Celebrate your special occasion in our spacious yet elegant banquet room. Join us for lunch or dinner at Rania's Restaurant, Bar and Grill in Uptown Martinsville. Join us for Rania's Express Lunch every day. Why go to a fast food restaurant when you can order from our $5 menu? Soup and mixed green salad or Caesar salad. Chef salad with ham turkey and organic egg. Rania's Greek salad, organic scrambled eggs, meat lasagna, or fettuccine with fresh made Alfredo sauce. How about spaghetti with homemade meat sauce or spaghetti with homemade marinara sauce? For only $5.99, eggplant parmesan. And on the $6.29 menu, chicken kebab salad or chicken Dijon salad. Salad with jalapeno, grilled chicken salad, and for six ninety nine, chicken fettuccine Alfredo. These are just some of the entrees available at Rania's for the express lunch. Come by and see us today. Don't ever say there's nothing to do when you're only a short drive to Cue Ball Family Arcade and Billiards, located at 6629 Greensboro Road in the Ridgewood Plaza, across from Clarence's Steakhouse. These days, we're all working extra hard, and it's good to know there's a place nearby you can go to have a little fun without emptying your wallet. It's your shot. Don't worry about a babysitter. Bring the kids. Cue Ball Family Arcade and Billiards has something for the whole family. Billiards. Arcade games, air hockey, foosball, and a real cool driving machine. Rack them up! And don't forget, ladies shoot free Monday nights from 6 until 11 p.m. So, girls, what do you like best here at Cue Ball Family Arcade and Billiards? I like the video games. I like pool cues. I like the accessories. I like the pool thing. And if you really take your billiard game seriously, you'll be glad to know that Cue Ball Family Arcade and Billiards is an authorized Balabushta dealer for cue sticks, bags, carrying cases, pool balls, training balls, gloves, tip accessories, and Balabushta chalk. And they also have a fine selection of Sterling and Fury cues. Cue Ball Family Arcade and Billiards, located at 6629 Greensboro Road, Ridgeway. Come by and see us. We're directly across from Clarence's Steak and Seafood House. Talmadge Services is your one-stop source for major home appliance parts and repairs. Complete HVAC sales and service and full facilities maintenance services. Our experienced master licensed technicians will provide quality, dependable, and affordable solutions to your repair, installation, or your maintenance needs. And when it comes to major appliance repair, we provide the service calls to your home or business. And when it comes to major appliance parts, we specialize in those hard-to-find parts, all makes and models. We provide professional facilities maintenance from preventive to lighting to even desk and file cabinet repairs. We have 64 years combined experience in HVAC, including duct sealing and repairs of all kinds. We're state licensed and provide free estimates. Talmadge Services has been locally owned and operated for 53 years, and we're proud of our commitment to exceptional customer service. Call us today for honest repair and maintenance estimates and advice. We're located at 518 West Church Street in Martinsville, 632-9828. Now is the time to get your air conditioning or heating and cooling unit in top working order. Don't wait. Get it done now. 
While other companies are charging premium rates right now, Talmadge Services is offering special discounts and even reasonable maintenance agreements for budget-conscious businesses. Well-maintained equipment is the key to lower costs they don't come any more credible than Talmadge Services, so call today. 632-9828, 632-9828, that's 632-9828. Hi, I'm Tommy Lasorda, and I love helping anybody who loves baseball. There's a terrific team of volunteers who are available to help small business owners get started and grow. They are the counselors of SCORE, and they can help you have a winning team. By the way... The price is right because the admission is free. So contact the folks at SCORE. To contact a SCORE counselor, call 800-634-0245 or visit SCORE.org. Martinsville SCORE is located in the Chamber of Commerce building on Broad Street. Counseling is available each Thursday at 12 noon on a first-come, first-served basis. Phone 632-6401 for more information. Okay, big doings, folks. Uh, the Young Blood Evil Intentions movie is uh, coming to the Reeves Theater, and the uh, world premiere is going to be Friday, September 21st at 9 p.m., and then an encore showing at on um, on the next day, Saturday, September 29th, uh, September 22nd <laughs> at 9 p.m. I knew I had a nine in there somewhere, and uh, that being at the historic Reeves Theater at 215 East Church Street in Martinsville. And if you are someone who would like to get tickets to see this movie, well, let me tell you what you need to do. You need to go to Stafford's Music Center and uh, or Woodall's Music, or you can go uptown Martinsville to What's Your Sign? And that's at 27th East Church Street between Bill's Jewelers and Arts, etc. in Uptown Martinsville. Those of you who are towards the North Carolina way, you can also pick up tickets at the uh, Screaming uh, Ink Tattoo um, establishment down on Bridge Street in Eden, North Carolina. Tickets are $7.00. And uh, this is a pretty cool movie. Uh, local filmmakers Matt and Myron Smith, uh, their first movie, and they're going to be showing it right there at the theater, uh, right where all the, uh, the the great horror movies of our time have flickered across the very same screen. And uh, just a little while ago, we had uh, two very charming young ladies, uh, Zoe Cox, who plays Anastasia, the good little girl, and her evil sister, Anna Vey, uh by uh, Autumn Ward. Now, I think that you're some relation to these, uh, the, 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 these young divas here. Definitely. Um, Autumn Ward, that's my daughter, and then the other one might as well be Zoe. <laughs> it's her birthday today, so we want to... Well, birthday happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. That's really cool. Yeah. Now, um, you know, I, I'd, uh, I, I really think what you guys have done is great, and I'm just really excited about this, and I'm a big fan of horror movies, but I do want to... Um, to, to to drop this out here. I know that there are, are, are kids in this movie, but it's, it's really not a kid's movie, is it? Right, no. no. Right. So, yeah. It's more geared for horror fans, yeah. the people that like horror movies. There are a lot of kids in this movie, and yeah. I expect they'll be there. And It's kind of up to the parents to decide what they think is right for their kid. I would recommend they view it first and see what they think yeah. and you know, come up with that decision and then you know, play it. Well, you see, there's going to be two showings. You know, mm -hmm. the, you know, the parents can go see it Friday night and decide whether they, if the, the children, uh, uh, if it's suitable for their children to go to. And then that is a decision that 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 the, each parent has to make. You know, there's not a blanket thing. And as far as uh, you know, the, the the issue of having a horror movie with children in it. You know, that's not the first time. There's been all kinds of movies. You know, you know, you know. We talked about the, the Children of the Corn and Children of the Dam and stuff like that. There's been uh, all kinds of movies that way. But you know, being in a horror movie is not like watching a horror movie. That's like when I was talking with the kids there. You know, you got the little the K Rose syrup and stuff like that. Oh, it's yucky and stuff like that. But it looks really scary on the screen. But I I, I, I bet there's a lot of laughter going on when when you oh, guys yeah, are doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, surprisingly, we had trouble. We made a mixture of strawberry and chocolate syrup, and yeah. surprisingly, they didn't want to do that. But you know, so they could put it in their mouth. Yeah. And, you know, it looks so 
bloody, but it's <laughs> strawberry and chocolate syrup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it tastes good too. Yeah. Yeah, we use different things for blood, different yeah, scenes yeah. depending on. If you want the blood to be a certain color, we might do it this way. But yeah. It would, depending on it coming into the mouth or out of the whatever, you know. <laughs> now, I forget now. Oh, yeah, y'all yeah, remember this. Uh, in the movie uh, Psycho, mm-hmm. uh, it was a black and white film, the Anthony Perkins, classic horror movie. Right. The uh, blood was chocolate syrup mm-hmm. because it looked so good on the screen. Yeah. You know, but it was black and white. Yeah, know, so you get away with it back yeah. then. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, material that, um, that 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 folks use for um, fake blood. I know uh, I I worked for a while down in Orlando, Florida, and I worked uh, for Universal Studios, and I got to play uh, a, a character, one of the the horror, uh, the Halloween Horror Nights they have it. You know, during during Thanksgiving. And uh, they put all kinds of Cairo syrup and stuff on me. And uh, I was doing this little bit where I was jumping out at at, at folks and shaking a rubber snake. Well, I dropped my snake, right? And so I came down and I hit my head. And I could just feel blood coming down my face, you know. Well, the way it was is there was another guy dressed just like you who would come behind a curtain and he'd spell you, tap you on your, on your shoulder. So, so this guy taps me and I said, I'm going to have to go to, to, to health services. He says, why? And he says, I'm, I, I just hurt myself and I'm bleeding. And he looks at me and all this fake blood on me goes, where? <laughs> so they sent me to the uh, the hospital. And I mean, I, I looked like some homeless dad had been in a fight. I had blood all over me. And they brushed me right in there and had everybody else. And the doctors and the nurses were coming, you know. And this the nurse was looking. She goes, uh, honey, I'm sorry, but I, I, it, what, 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 where are you hurt? Is this little cut all this blood? And I, I'd have to tell her that it's not blood, it's it's taro syrup, and it's because I'm in Halloween Horror Nights, but I did hurt myself. Well, she thought that was funny, and so she kept sending people in there, see if you'd find why that guy's bleeding so bad, you know. So the point of it is, this uh, taro syrup and, 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 and different things, that can look really real. I mean, you know, I mean, it was fooling the doctors and nurses. They thought that, that I was... Uh, uh, really hurt bad, but it was just something fake, and that's the thing I want to to lift up to people about this this movie. And you know, if you are you know have a problem with seeing kids, you know, you know it's a vampire movie, folks. You can't have a vampire movie without blood. It just it don't work. It's it's got to be done. You say, and and and, and what, what what you're going to be seeing is what strawberry. Uh, what, what do you say? What, what's making it? It's sometimes a strawberry and chocolate syrup mix. Sometimes carrots. If it's in their mouth, it's only it's strawberry. Yeah, and chocolate. yeah. yeah. So, so you see, it's uh, it it's all Halloween, folks. It's, got it's the image it's all and Halloween. illusion. Yeah, and the fake blood from the yeah. Halloween store. And yeah, that. yeah, that's right. And so, uh, I but now I just want to, to you know to lift that up so people you know won't be bringing like really small children to it. But that is the. That 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 that's not a derogatory comment at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. uh, it, it's uh, uh, it's just something folks need to know yeah. because it's it, it is a, 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 a even though it has children in it, it's not a, a movie for children. And uh, and I think I you know I, th- I think we'd be remiss if we didn't. Yeah, we didn't mention that. that so a lot of people probably think it's geared for children right. specifically because there are so many children in it. Yeah. And and we hope that all these kids you know, can be there and see it at least at some point in their life. Yeah. You know? um, really appreciate them coming out there and they did really great. You know, uh, the most trouble we had was just with, with my two, but the rest yeah. of them were real enthusiastic about it and and they did real great. Yeah. Proud so of them all. I hope, hope they grow up to be actors and directors. Yeah. And, how is it working with children? I mean, uh, is this the first time you've worked with kids before? Just about. Um, I was going to set up um, a workshop for children at one time, mm-hmm. teach them about the videography business. Yeah. But it didn't really pan out. I didn't get any goers. So yeah. I had kind of planned for it and thought about how I was going to deal with it and everything. But it's, you know. But then it wasn't bad. The parents were always there. And if they got out of line or something, I just, hey, you know, I could get them. Yeah. And, you know, it wasn't up to me. To, you know, I didn't have to be a bad guy at any point. And, yeah. and the kids really didn't need too much discipline. Yeah, they got right. a little rowdy at the school scene, but other than yeah. that, they, they were great. <laughs> yeah, I'd, uh, 
I got to uh, help you guys with a scene that was shot at the uh, skating rink, mm-hmm. and uh, but boy, they beat up that little Chuck E. Cheese guy pretty rough. <laughs> that was your idea, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm trying to remember whose idea that was. It just kind of came with that together somehow, but yeah, yeah, somebody had to initially come up with it. Yeah, but boy. Yeah, that was one of the stunts. We didn't want to bring it up right away, but it is right in the first of the movie. But the guy that's, the, you know, you see him put on the thing, and then it's a stunt guy. Yeah. The thing. I mean, if you get, like, eight kids to jump on you and they just pound away, that's yeah. a stunt. Yeah. You know, some people see stuff in movies and don't even consider it a stunt or don't yeah. think about it, but it is. You yeah. Know? It's Basically, if you wouldn't do it yourself, it's a stunt. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And in that mob picture, we have, you know, a kid, uh, there's an actor that came down from Salem, who's actually also a wrestler. His uh, mm-hmm. wrestling name is Kid Lightning. Yeah. But he grabs the pitchfork away from the angry person who's holding the pitchfork. And that's that's kind of a stunt, really. You know, and then he, um, you know... It, yeah, you don't think of it, but it's like, hey, you know, we, we had little rubber tips on in and all that, but it's still yeah. a pitchfork, and we had to pick, pick people that we thought were responsible with it. And, yeah. You know, we couldn't just hand it to anybody. Yeah. You know? yeah. I think his friend, Bobby Yella, was the guy in the uh, mouse suit. He was also he's also a wrestler from Salem, and I think they come down to North Carolina to. And wrestle. also involved in the stunt work was Adam Hex. He comes in, and tries to break up the fight with that mouse, and they knock him off his skates. Yeah, and that was real. I mean, it was just they, I told him to push him. I told him not to be hard, but I mean, they push him and he falls, and that's the take we got. It's that's why that looks so real. <laughs> they really knock him off his feet. <laughs> he might be a great wrestler, but I don't know about him on a skate. <laughs> So, uh, you know, we're getting down pretty close to the end here. If you guys want to call in and ask these guys some questions here, uh, 632-5433 or 866-670-5489. And we've come to the part where people have been uh, waiting for. We're going to play the official trailer. Now, uh, there's been an unofficial trailer. What is the difference between an official trailer and an unofficial trailer? We made the unofficial trailer... um was it but when we started the Kickstarter program? This is just to show people what we got so far, what we're working with. Uh-huh. We didn't have the church scene, the school, the skating rink. Uh, you know, a lot of these locations we didn't have at the time. Yeah, a lot of the actors we, we didn't yeah. have yet. And a lot of actors that are involved in this official trailer weren't there yet. So we knew we were going to do another trailer that was going to be way better, but we just didn't have the scenes filmed quite yet. And, yeah. And um, so, so um, the difference. <laughs> So now this one here uh, is the uh, is this really uh, well both of them are scenes from the movie, so people uh, can can watch this and get an idea of uh, you know what they're you know what what, what it's all about and um, I'm I'm looking for it right now is this um, there we go now now I found what I was looking for <laughs> okay so. Um, here we go. This is the official trailer of the uh, uh, Matt and Myron Smith's uh, masterpiece, I, I, I would say. Uh, uh, Young Blood, Evil Intentions that was uh, shot right here in Martinsville by the local folks, uh, starring um, uh, local folks uh, in the movie, and as well as a lot of. Uh, f- Famous actors that, that that had cameos in it, and uh, and it's going to be at the Reeves Theater here. All of it just local, and uh, a lot of you know a lot of excitement and buzz about this. And so uh, let's uh, take a look at the official trailer of Young Blood, Evil Intentions. I'm going to turn you into a vampire just like me. You can never tell Mom and Dale about this. Are we going to get in trouble when Dale sees my neck? I'm sorry, Grandma Mom. Sorry, Grandma Mom. There's blood. There's mayhem. There's disembowelment. Dismemberment. It's horrible. It's awful. You shouldn't be messing around with things you don't understand. Oh, I understand, all right. We're going to turn the whole school into vampires, and there will be blood. What got into you? 
The whole student body is going to the nurse's office. Hey, hey! I wonder what my little angels are up to now. Disregard this call. You're hiding something. You were there, weren't you? You got nothing on me. The biggest thing I can I can emphasize is it's it's important to stay calm. We must vanquish the evil by any means necessary. But what can we do, preacher? Kill all those vampires! Yeah! We're all gonna do something about it! Yeah! These kids wanna suck our blood? Children have to feed. You've got to learn to control that temper of yours. Ah! Oh my god! Oh. Oh, Jeffrey! Jeffrey! Wow. Pretty exciting stuff there. Pretty exciting stuff. <laughs> well, I tell you, I, I'm just I'm getting really jazzed about going to see that. Man, that's going to be really cool. So, um, is, is there anything else you want folks to know here about this, or any, anybody you'd like to get a shout out to before we uh, head, head it to the barn here? And there's so many people to thank. Yeah, man. We'll be on here another half hour if we get started on that. But yeah. there's a lot of great music and arts. Like we were talking about earlier, people getting involved from all genres of art to put stuff together. And all different types within that. You know, with music, we got country, you know, rock music, just creepy music. You know, our score and background music was done by Crystal Cox. That's a local. And um, she does a good percentage of the music. Wow, you know, a lot of that sounds really orchestra uh, Orchestra type music. I thought that you bought that from a, uh, 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 you know, some kind of. Um, no, that animal, music you, know? you hear right there. That's that's Zoe Cox, the uh, girl that plays Anastasia. That's her mother. Wow. So also my girlfriend, and um, she makes all that music, and it, it does sound like an orchestra or something. It's very professional. Yeah. Sound. Wow, that that is really incredible. I'm I'm really amazed that. Uh, uh, like I said, I thought that that was some sort of uh, orchestrational uh, uh, arrangement there. Yeah, and you hear that little band for a little while, like guitar. That's our friend Skyline's Always Fall from Winston Salem. Yeah, I would like to give him a shout out. Cindy does a little same performance in there, mm-hmm. and uh, Mariachi Mexico 2000. They got some music in there, and they were they were so interesting to meet. You can catch them at El Norteño's. Every yeah. Like second Thursday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 They agreed to be in the movie, and they really, they really jazzed up the scene that they, that we filmed over there. So, all right. Their music is amazing too. All these guys. Well, that's it, folks. That's all the time we have, and I would like to lift this up for you one more time here. Uh, the movie "Young Blood: Evil Intentions" by local filmmakers uh, Matt and uh, Byron Smith. Are uh, starring uh, Zoe Cox and uh, as Anastasia and Autumn Ward as Anna Bay is going to be at the historic Rees Theater, and uh, that is at um, 215 East Church Street in Martinsville. Uh, the world premiere is going to be at 9 p.m. on Friday, September 21st, and the encore presentation Saturday. Uh, September 22nd at 9 p.m. And uh, we encourage uh, folks to go and take a look at it Friday. And then if you uh, kind of decide whether this is something that you want to bring your kids to, uh, this is a, uh, a, a, a horror movie. And it's a vampire movie. And, you know, you got to have a little blood in a vampire movie. You can't have a vampire movie with no blood. That would just suck. It's just not fun. It's not fun. <laughs> that would suck. A vampire movie that, that sucks but that has, has no blood in it. And um, and lastly, uh, would like to um, uh, tell you where you can pick up tickets at. You can get tickets at Stafford's Music in Martinsville and Woodall's Music uh, in Collinsville, and What's Your Sign in Uptown Martinsville at 27 East Church Street in between uh, Bill's Jewelers and Arts, etc. And then those of you that around Carolina, you can uh, drop by and uh, see the folks at Streaming Ink Tattoo uh, on Bridge Street in Eden, North Carolina. 
and uh, lots of uh, places where you can pick up tickets. And tickets are seven dollars. And uh, we we really hope that you guys are uh, you know coming. I think you guys are going to really ham it up here with this. You know, didn't you tell me something about a limousine or something like that? <laughs> uh, we're going to see about some little red carpet thing. Um, yeah. It's not definitely in the workshop, but um, we're trying to look into getting a hearse, actually, instead of missing <laughs> to do the horror thing. So. Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah. That's all in the air. Well, Matt Byron, I, I tell you, it's been it's really been a pleasure. And uh, Thanks for having us on here. Thank you so much for letting me a part of it. You know, I know if you're looking at the, tra- the trailer there, you see... I don't know what we're going to do, preacher. Well, you know, it, it was kind of full you guys. You know, you know, let me have a little uh, speaking role in there. And that just really, uh, you know, really made my day when you, you guys included me in part of your movie. And I, I really appreciate that. And uh, we are going to play the trailer one more time. And then after that, we're going to go to our regular scheduled program. Uh, with the, uh, the, the, the news on channel... Um, 40 and then uh, the regular radio programming on WHEE and uh, lots of fun and uh, tonight uh, I would like to lift up to you that we've got Doug Harrison and the uh, Doug Harrison Night Show it's got all kinds of comedy stuff here for you he's going to be uh, sharing with you um, uh, at 7 o'clock and then at 8 o'clock Dr. Stan's going to be here and uh, you, you might have watched the uh, coffee break this morning and enjoy Dr. Stan and he's going to be here right here in the studio directly across from where we're sitting right now doing his show The Journey of Life. Lots of good stuff for you on Martinsville Media here. So uh, let's uh, go out here with another look at the uh, official trailer and I'll see you tomorrow uh, for the uh, talk of the town and uh, Doug Harrison uh, I think is going to do the the talk of the town with me and so what we used to do a show back years ago called the Friday Night Special and you know it's kind of cool to be able to uh, uh, you, know, you know, for us to sort of like kid and, uh, and joke with each other about current events and stuff. And so make plans to be with us. And, of course, Bill's going to be with you bright and early uh, tomorrow morning for the Coffee Break show. So, so long, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Just like me. You can never tell Mom and Dale about this. Are we gonna get in trouble when Dale sees my neck? I'm sorry, Grandma. I'm sorry, Grandma. I'm there's blood. There's mayhem. There's disembowelment, dismemberment. It's horrible. It's awful. You shouldn't be messing around with things you don't understand. Oh, I understand, all right. We're going to turn the whole school into vampires, and there will be blood. What got into you? The whole student body is going to the nurse's office. Anna Oh, I know what my little angels are up to now. <laughs> Disregard this goal. You're hiding something. You were there, weren't you? You got nothing on me. The biggest thing I can I can emphasize is it's it's important to stay calm. We must vanquish the evil by any means necessary. But what can we do, preacher? Kill all those vampires! Yeah! Yeah! We're all gonna do something about it! Yeah! Yeah! These kids wanna suck our blood? The children have to feed. Yeah! You've got to learn to control that temper of yours. Oh my god! Oh.